Well, let's move on to five then. And so, would someone like to read this or the in closing or? I can read it. Okay, thank you, Leon. I want to close by returning to Hansberry's words. We can impose beauty on our future. I want to commune with Hansberry's use of the word beauty because as feminist womanists and are women with a radical vision for the future, beauty remains a, load, a loaded term. All women are constrained by cultural definitions of beauty and BIWOP, Black Indigenous women of color, especially so. How do you define beauty? According to Angela Davis's public lecture with Girl Trek, beauty resides in a more beautiful world. Beauty, according to Davis, is about liberation, is beautiful. Given this, I want us to impose beauty on our future by voicing beautiful sentences from pages 20 to 35. In this way, we become the chorus, a collective voice belonging to women constructing a new world. I'll go first. A woman is a ritual, a house that must accommodate, a house that must endure, generation after generation. Okay, thank you, Liam. Well, um, I don't know what it says about me because the things that I underline are not beautiful sentences. They're like, you <laughs> should uh, see my notes. It's like, really? weak, weak, <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> okay. Beauty is about liberation. So, you know, because uh, I underline a lot of stuff too. And... Uh, not for its not for its eloquence uh, as as much as its uh, resonance, I, I guess. Um, here's one. Uh, silence is like starvation, felt most sharply when one has had a full belly most of her life. Sherry Moraga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have one that's more about resonance than beauty, which is uh, daily we feel the pull and tug of having to choose between which parts of our mother's heritage we, heritages we want to claim and where and which parts have served to cloak us with the knowledge of ourselves. That's from Entering the Lives of Others on page 19. Mm. Well... Like you both, I was just underlining stuff that stood out to me. So uh, one that I liked was um, from Mitsuya Yamada's Invisibility is an Unnatural Disaster. It's her last um, paragraph on page 35. She says, we need to raise our voices a little more. Even as they say to us, this is so uncharacteristic of you to finally recognize our own invisibility is to finally be on the path toward visibility. Invisibility is not a natural state for anyone. Mm. So may not be beautiful, but it's on the road to beauty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the opening paragraph to La Guerra, uh, the, the opening quote. Uh, it is the quality of our response to the event and our capacity to enter into the lives of others that help us to make their lives and experiences our own. And that's a quote from Emma Goldman. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I have one that I can share. Um, I want your wellness. Want the boy who left on a freight car. I want a boy who cried because his mother is dead and his daddy's gone crazy. I want the one who gathered water and wood 
I don't want this man cut off, who cut off his hair and joined the government to be safe. Christos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was, I like that one because so many of us are divorced from our history mm -hmm. because we've been raised by people who have to do, have to, have to, they had to do whatever in order for us to be safe. And so it reminded me of, of my mother. People talked about my mother before and after my father who left her while she was pregnant with me. And she was like a wild woman. And I never <laughs> knew her. By the time that I came around, she was recovering from that relationship and her life was, it was all about Jesus, which, you know, Jesus is fine. So, uh, yeah. So it was, that's what it reminded me of that I'm hearing like an aching for kind of the unadulterated understanding of who one's parents can be. Right. right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, this is another one from Sherry on page uh, 24. Uh, in this country, lesbianism is a poverty, as is being brown, as is being a woman, as is being just plain poor. The danger lies in ranking the oppression. The danger lies in failing to acknowledge the specificity of the oppression. The danger lies in attempting to deal with oppression purely from a theoretical base without an emotional, heartfelt grappling with the source of our own oppression, without naming the enemy within ourselves and outside of us, no authentic, non-hierarchical connection among oppressed groups can take place. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Yeah, I definitely saw that one. It's huh. interesting. I was cool to that one a little bit. Oh, really? yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Explain. I get the sentiment. I, I get it. And I, and, I, and I agree. And then there was just something around. It reminded me of, of I think it was the Advocate magazine that tried a cover that said, gay is the new black. <sighs> And I just kind of think that like, there are acute, it's not a question of ranking. Like, I don't want that to be lost, that there are oppressions that are more acute. Like the United States of America is founded on anti-blackness, period. <laughs> yeah. That's not a ranking, that's a reality. And yeah, so there was something I definitely had a reaction to it. In fact, um, I wrote a not so nice comment in my margins. But <laughs> okay, it is, a, it is a reality, Leonie. Um, but I think it's also a reality that that model, which was perfected with us, um, is translated in so many other ways and manifest in so many other ways with different with different populations. And you know, so for example, um, last last week I remember you talking a little bit about the difficulties of allyship with white women. Um, and so, you know, there was there was a period in our in our development when black people had some resentment to the women's movement using the language and tools and methods that had been honed in the black liberation movement. Um, but, you know, women too have their concerns and experiences of oppression. And so, and so what is the method by which we enter into allyship with people 
whose issues are not exactly the same, um, but who by allying with them, we build a stronger coalition. Um, you know, so that's, 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 I think, the, the spirit that I got out of that, that passage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I caught the same thing too. That was my understanding. My, the thing that I reacted to was the sense of like, not the sense, for me, it's dangerous to reduce it down to rank. And I'm not saying that's the author's intention, but that's the response that mm -hmm. I had a mm -hmm. physical response to reading mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, she does say that the danger lies in ranking the oppression, right? Mm -hmm. What what happened to me is worse than what happened to you, or right. you know, because everybody's hell is unique, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah, and there's a flip side to it in that it can also be that amongst, I mean, this is not theory; it, it's known that amongst other people of color within the group of people of color, people from the global majority, that there isn't a recognition of the impact of anti-Blackness. And it's one of the ways that, again, white supremacy thinking is used to um, have oppression be expressed within people of color groups, which is why you see counter narratives to that, like Black and Asian groups coming together or those kinds of things where, um, that sense of like, you know, well, we're all the same because we're people of color um, ends up being disruptive actually to any sense of connection or engagement because it doesn't recognize the impact that are, spe that are specific to some groups um, in certain contexts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Another one, uh, another one of Sherry's quotes um, that spoke to me related to what you're saying, Leone is uh, on page 28. So often the women seem to feel no loss, no lack, no absence when women of color are not involved. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a, it, it, it is a struggle. It, it is a struggle and, you know, just for just for me, you know, to go back to the language of, of feminism that I was talking about earlier, um, you know, there's there's this sort of ranking that goes on among black women and men, you know, who's more oppressed? It's a black man, you know, the whole movement around why is it that we react to and know the names of young black men when when they are prematurely killed but we can't call call the name you know or have that same kind of um reaction when it happens to a black woman and you know so that that really is what i think sherry is trying to get at that so how how you know how do we build this this understanding and compassion for each other, recognizing that, you know, our journeys are a bit different. Um, but, you know, tra tra tragic, <laughs> nonetheless. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, as, 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 as the mother of a black male, you know, um, I'm I, I'm equally concerned about what's happening to black men, you know. As the daughter of a black man, as, as the sister of black men, I'm as concerned about the state of black men as I am about the state of black women. Um, but at the same time, I don't need your blindness to the ways that women are oppressed um, to oppress me while I want to ally with you. Mm -hmm. So it's, 
you know, and, and I don't know, maybe mm. it's maybe it's more than our little brains, human brains can figure out, you know. I was having a conversation mm. with one of my girlfriends um, telling her about um, the, the story this week about um, the rats in New York, um, which are aggressive on a usual day. Apparently they're becoming more aggressive because they can't find food as easily um, now that, that people have gone back in the house. Um, you know, but, but all of nature is having a reaction to humans being back in the house. And so one of the things she said to me, she said, well, you know, the rats shouldn't be, you know, the, the humans are in charge. We're smarter than them. And I said, are we? <laughs> <laughs> we like to think that, but in the meantime, we're destroying the mother earth <laughs> every chance we yeah. get. And nature is so happy that we have sat down for a minute and there all the animals are coming out to play and <laughs> trees are blooming and nature is singing. Thank God I got a break from those humans because they are destructive. Yes. <laughs> huh. That is so true. Great discussion. Yeah. Boy, we have a dilemma. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. How to work together and then give each of us the our issues the kind of weight right. equally that it deserves. Right. You know? What's important to you may not be important to me, but I should respect its importance to you and fight just as hard for your issues as I fight for my own if we're going to be aligned. Right. So, hmm. Right. And so what, so what I heard Sher Sherry saying, you know, quite directly was she had no interest in a, a gay revolution, you know, that, it, that ignored... <laughs> you know, all these other oppressions, you know. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. And I, you know, I feel like that. I have no interest in a, in a women's revolution that ignores all of these other oppressions, you know. Yeah. So that's why I think we have to, like, really think deeply about what we what we really mean by freedom, you know, the the kind of words that that we toss around when we're imagining a new and more beautiful world. Indeed. Indeed. Hmm. All right. Well, <laughs> we we have one minute. <laughs> the only you have something to add. Oh, no, no. We can close on on that very profound challenge yeah. <laughs> to our brothers and sisters out here. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> make it work, people. We have to work together. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Figure out a way to work together. Because there are so many forces around us making sure <laughs> we get divided and distracted. Oh, my. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 